Hello everyone, this is Counter Yellow, bringing you another video in Star Trek Online. And I was surprised that this starship was announced today. I thought it was going to be a little bit longer, so that's why this video is coming out a little bit later than I thought it was going to. Um, today we'll talk about our new promo pack, um, Frigate Inside the Game. I'll do my regular comparisons with, with the cruisers and escorts that I feel are noteworthy. Um, keep in mind, because I've rushed this a whole bunch, these ships are going to basically be the same ships that I used for the Alachi Frigate comparisons. So... Anyway, if you want to see the timelines in the description, you're more than welcome to. I'll be diving, diving a lot more of my time into talking about the trait and the console, rather than the Star Trek comparison stats themselves. And there'll be more in a TLDW as to whether or not the ship is worth it. Um, so yeah, so you see the timelines if you want to skip throughout the video. Now, just to do groundwork in case you missed the Alachi video, Raiders in, the, in this game regularly just have seven weapons. You typically lose one weapon slot to get that raider flanking. Um, if you if you do an assigned scout ship, it only has six, like many other of, of the old science ships in the game. But for your like escort class starships, they normally have eight weapons. Those ones when they turn into raiders typically lose one weapon slot to get that raider flanking. And it, and if you're take, use, using raiders that have a the have a universal, you also lose the ensign universal slot. But otherwise, the rest of your slots are going to be universal slots beyond that commander one. The engineering version of raiders is, are called frigates in, in, in the game, and they have a commander and engineering, but the rest of them are, are, are universal. And But the difference is, is they have a full eight um, weapons on their starship. This, this one's a bit better than, than the Alachi one a little bit, in that it's, it's, it's got a better um, base um, impulse speed of 0 0.2 versus the 0 .7, 0 0.17 of the Alachi frigate. Slightly worse terrain and inertia, but that's much easier to over overcome than, than the base um, impulse speed. This is much more valuable than, than these two. You know, these being higher is also it's also really nice to have too. Um, one of the things that immediately stuck out to me was that this ship has five tactical consoles, which is another starship in the game that's breaking the established rules that Cryptic has had for starships for a long time. For instance, if you had a ship with a Commander Science bridge off your seat, you would expect in, 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 in the consoles to have the highest console number to be Science or tied between Science and, and one of the other two console types. So for instance, for a Science ship, you would never expect it to have less than four Science consoles and for none of the other consoles to be higher than four because you typically have at least two for, one, for all of your console types as well. In this Starship, we actually have more tactical consoles than engineering consoles, despite the fact that this is a commander engineering starship. So, Cryptic is breaking their rules there. If they want to be consistent with that, it should have been five tactical and five engineering with one science. People probably aren't going to be complaining at all about that particular difference. I'm someone who's looked at all, all, all the stats of all the ships in the games, so it's something that I'm going to immediately notice. I've also been working on a video on, on how to rebalance all, all the Starship classes in the game into a more simplified format, but that will be coming in probably a couple weeks. Now, for the Starship itself, I was a bit too lazy to make this as its own slide, but uh, it, in the game it's called the Freedom Class Exploration Frigate. It's only available to Federation and Federation allies, unfortunately. There isn't any equivalent for, for KDF captains. Cryptic seems to do that a bunch in, in this game. It's got a 1.3 hull ratio, which is quite high versus the equivalence of what I, of, of, in my opinion, inside the game. It's got a bit lower shield ratio, but in PvP it doesn't matter as much. Um, and also, if you're you're doing the meta DPS maps against the Borg, a shield ratio doesn't matter quite as much there either. Okay, you really need a super high shield ratio for it to really significantly matter. And since these these are more DPS high new really starships. Lower shield ratio and but a, a, a reasonable hull ratio is, is actually fairly nice. Um, fire through weapon layout like the Alachi frigate. Um, turning is, is a bit lower, but impulse is higher, like I was asking for on the Alachi frigate. Bridge officer seating unfortunately doesn't have a commander, a miracle worker, or commander pilot. In my opinion, this ship should have had something like that, especially when you're going for promotion pack starships nowadays. I think it should have a commander specialist seat. Um, I think it's just kind of ridiculous that we don't have that anymore today, but anyway, having a, a miracle worker on, on a number of starship, we don't really see this too often. 
Um, like the Maki Raider is kind of like the only other one I can really think of off the top of my head. I think it's later in this video that of, of any other, other other fast starships with Miracle War Worker C. Um, it's got Miracle Worker Worker and Pilot. Um, so you can, you can have some things like Mixed Armor Synergy and like overload those types of things uh, in PvP if you so choose. This is a starship that should be serviceable in PvP and also serviceable in PvE. Again, I don't think this is going to necessarily be a meta starship in either, in either realm, but it should be, it's going to be another one of those like fun to fly starships. For your money, for similar looks, I think the NX for Federation Captains is just a bit better. Console layout's the same, um, better maneuverability. Um, yes, the whole ratio is quite a bit lower, but you also get the point defense above our warhead with this thing, which is very high in the meta for dps builds for phasers disruptors and plasma weapons in, in, inside of this game so you actually get a lot with a starship for the cost that your hole is quite a bit lower than, than this new starship you know this starship is super expensive in pro pack versus this one's from regular lockbox this one was from an event so it's either really cheap for you or really expensive if you didn't get it during the event for the actual comparisons themselves Again, as I've said, these are going to basically be the exact same slides as from my Lachi video, because I was rushing through this video. I basically prepped this in like less than 15 minutes before recording this, so there's, there might be stat errors in, in this. Uh, comparing, obviously, versus the other fast cruisers in the game, the Kelvin Timeline, Dreadnought Cruiser, and Discovery um, Flight Deck Carrier are both pretty fast carriers. This one is actually faster. We find probably have one that's faster than these, which is for Commander Engineering, which I think for a Raider, that's what that's the way that it should be. Um, could argue that these ones should be faster, but for different reasons. Um, I think both of them are definitely more powerful in the DPS realm, but with Raider flanking, these potentially could out DPS these guys, potentially. Uh, we have the, the, the ending Battle Cruiser. Yes, I, I, I was told this was the wrong name for it. I prepped this in like 15 minutes. I didn't have time to change the name. It's, it's still a, a, a fast cruiser. There's also the Undine Warship, which is also a nice starship too. In PvP, for carriers, you, you'll see the seal bond quite a bit more uh, because it's got a bow cloak plus two, hang, two hangar bays. Um, and this thing doesn't have a, a cloak from what I was skimming through the article. Um... Uh, now, this is one of the more interesting slides. Both of these ships have a Lieutenant Commander Universal Pilot, um, but this one also has that Miracle Worker seat. The whole ratio is basically the same. The difference between these guys is that this one has a much higher shield ratio for a 4-4 layout, slightly less maneuverability, and that it can't use um, dual cannons. However, you can always just use the Romulan version, then you get dual cannons and a battle cloak. And it's just a matter of being a little bit slower, but more shields. And as to whether which one of these is going to be better for you. Also, you're down one console versus this guy for, for, for tactical slots. Um, in terms of escorts, again, many escorts are quite a bit more comparable to the frigate class in general. Um, one thing to clarify from the Lachi video, that was also pointed out to me, the, um, the Dominion console sets, um, all of them inside the game, the two big ones, like the one from the um, the Gemini Vanguard um, starships, as well as the the original set from the Strike Recon ship, as well as the, the Dreadnought Carrier and um, the, um, the the Tactical Carrier from, from the Exchange. Um, both of those console sets can now be used by all starships, not just these ones. So actually in PvP, you generally don't see these starships here anymore. Um, the big thing that was keeping these guys competitive was the Dominion console set, because it used to be exclusive to them. Also my strongest tanks video, I put some of the Gemini ships higher just because they could use these sets and other ships couldn't. I was wrong in that they can now, so those rankings are a little bit out of whack, but those ships are still strong. Um, the Rising Pilot Corvette is still the fastest ship in the game, so if that's your thing and, and you don't care about cloaking and you have access to this thing, 
I don't care as much about Raider flanking. This thing is still quite competitive. Um, we also have the pilot escorts from the C store. You got the faster ones, and then you have the slower ones that have more um, utility around them and synergize with the Dominion console, which is in the meta for DPS anyway. Um, so yeah, there are those ships too. Um, if you want me, if, if you want more, again, want more descriptions about these different ships versus the frigates, see my Lachi video because I go in a little bit more depth in in that video. The Phantom and and the Cardassian ones are still decent. Um, Cardassian Intel actually, actually lags a bit behind the Extraction the Frigate now, just by the way the base stats are, which is kind of interesting. The character casting Escort is, is in many ways almost like a destroyer rather than an actual escort, but I've talked about that in my Starship classes video on that. Some escorts feel more like destroyers than, than actual escorts. Some destroyers feel more, more like escorts than destroyers. A lot of those things between those two, for cryptic mode, is based upon the starship mastery more than the actual base stats and capability and feel of the starship themselves, which is an, an interesting design decision overall. Um, for, from the C store, um, some great raiders. The Jonar Vanguard Raider is, is nice. I feel like Oberos is a bit better because it's got a battle cloak and it's available to everyone. You know, you can also do science if you so choose on this thing. But it's got a Commander Universal Temper Operative, but because it's Commander Universal, you do lose that Ensign um, um, seat on the Starship. Um, and then from the fleet, we do have the pilot, um, the the pilot Raiders um, available to you. The Klingon version has 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 a battle cloak. The Federation Raider one doesn't, but otherwise it's the same stats. Uh, these shows have been out for a while. People have talked a lot about these things. Um, Kale actually likes to use the, um, the the KDF version a lot for him because he likes to use dual cannons, but he also isn't necessarily the best at piloting either, which probably goes it's the same with 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 a lot of the, of the average players in, in in the game that they they could probably use pilot maneuvers to help them reposition around enemies easier. Monkey Raider, as I said earlier, um, great starship overall. It's got Commander Mirror Worker. Uh, it's from a regular lockbox, so it is it is, it is quite going to be quite a bit cheaper than this one. It's also got better raider flanking than um, than that the, than the frigate has. Um, so quite maneuverable, great layout overall. Mirror, the mirror door is a, a a nice one too. Uh, and then of course we have some more. Lastly, KDF ones. The fleet Burrell is still. Because it's got an enhanced bow cloak, that's why that's what keeps this old guy ticking through into the modern um, era in Star Trek Online. Um, the Kelvin Timeline one for a lot of captains is probably going to be the better option, um, even though it holds a bit lower. Um, you still get bow, you have bow cloak, you've got pilot maneuvers, um, and you've, you've got an extra temper off to see for some extra survivability to be able to put into your starship, and the fact that this thing's faster. Okay, so now to talk about these guys here. The Starship trait TLDR of that, it sounds terrible. Um, now, I mean, for a budget standpoint, it sounds fine. But then when you realize, oh, that this is not a budget Starship. Because like, um, the Starship trait, the way that it's described is that if whenever you use, use evasive maneuvers, brace for impact, um, is also applied to your starship. When you use brace for impact, evasive maneuvers is also applied to your starship. I mean, um, basically two synergies kind of to go with it is um, if you have stuff that is based upon evasive maneuvers, uh, you could basically have brace for impact basically be able to be a second evasive maneuvers for you. Um, the other thing is that there's also the budget um, trait. I can't remember the name offhand, but it's one that uh, Brace for Impact gives you gives you additional damage whenever you activate it, so you'd be able to basically get that twice with Brace Maneuvers and Brace for Impact. In my opinion, this is much more towards budget end for the usability of this Starship trait, so I, I, I don't really see people ever using the Starship trait. Most people can't afford the Starship, people that will, eh, I, I don't see them use, using the trait more than just for some fun gimmicks if and once in a while. 
the console is the bigger talking point here. And, and, and it's the reason why I also have the IFF manipulator over here just as another talking point to talk about this. The passive stats gives you electrical damage and extra whole HP. The active does significant electrical damage waves, which it says it's even more significant versus smaller targets, and also gives you a maneuverability increase for the duration. Now, the question for me is, are they balancing this more towards the escape, like the maneuverability aspect of this, or as the, this is this is gonna be a viable counter versus carriers in the game, so that this thing could basically flat out almost one shot any um, pets out there. Keep in mind, the reason why this is this is out as waves is just because a lot of your good carrier captains out there have a lot of traits that give their pets basically in, in vulnerability half the time. So if it was just one wave, it wouldn't work against a lot of the carrier captains out there. It's gotta be something that it's like almost constant or um, throughout for a while so that um, it can get, so that it can eventually get past the vulnerability times for the pets and actually do damage to them and potentially take them out. Um, now, when it comes to at least PVP for um, countering carriers, funny enough, the best thing that I've been able to find that counters carriers is the IFF manipulator. What this thing does is, well, alongside the crit severity for direct energy weapons, which is already fantastic for DPS builds anyway, it's activatable, does an AOE confuse um, against the main target that forces um, all, all enemies around that target to be confused for six seconds. Uh, primary target is forced to taunt allies and the primary target loses up to 400 damage resistance rating for six seconds. And um, basically what this means is, let's say you have, let's say you're having trouble taking down a carrier and you're like, man, I can't get through this guy. This guy is super annoying. Pets count for these allies around a target. So they've got their pets out there and they're one that they have lots and lots of hangers. Well, they have two hangers each, you know, with six fighters in each. They're going to have more than 10 allies around them. So you fire this at the carrier, they've lost 400 damage resistance rating, which by the way, 400 damage resistance rating is the same amount that you get from a trait called honor to dead. And so if you're in PVP and someone's basically relying upon honor dead and invincible for their survival, well, guess what? You can use this console and now for six seconds, they don't have their honor dead stacks up on their starship. I found this extremely effective versus carriers. It is actually kind of ironic that this console is on the Suleiman Silk Flight Deck Cruiser, which was updated to be a carrier recently. So the fact that this starship has a console that can counter itself now, which is, it's kind of, it's really weird in my opinion, but um, yeah, that is something there for you. Um, if, if we start to see lots and lots of carriers and become even more popular in, in the future. Frankly, there, there, there's a good chance you probably should be bringing a Suvon Silic in, in, into your team to bring this, this console um, as a utility debuff to be able to basically easily one shot or at least proc the invincible proc on the carriers that, that, that you're fighting in, in PvP. Just saying. Okay, so for TL, TLDW here, um, we do have a new promotion ship. Um, it's based upon the USS Franklin from from the Kelvin movies from Star Trek Beyond. We, we've got that new Kelvin lockbox with Star Trek Beyond, so it makes sense we're getting a new Kelvin, or the new Star Trek Beyond starship. Um, it's another engineering writer like the Lachi Frigate, except that it's got much more hull. Uh, and it, it's got more tactical consoles than engineering consoles, so you it's... You can basically think of this as, this is an engineering starship that's truly built for DPS. It's basically a DPS starship that ha just happens to have a Lieutenant Commander Engineering, and then a full selection of universal consoles for whatever you want for it to be. 
And if you want to use the Raider Flanket on the thing, you're more than welcome to, or you can ignore it and, and just like the maneuverability that's on the Starship. A lot of players would probably get some benefits from use using the Starship, um, but it is a promotion pack Starship. It's way out of the price range of most players. I don't think overall it's worthwhile to get if that's just your one Starship. I mean, if you have lots of money, or if you really like the looks, by all means, go ahead and get it. Um, the trait is only really going to be super valuable, in my opinion, to budget builds. Um, PvP players aren't really going to care much about the trait, in my opinion. Um, the console, I feel, is a it should, if they, if they balance it correctly, I, I, I think it should be geared towards being a, a potent counter to carrier captains. Um, again, for PvP aspects in this game, um, to consult with other PvP experts on STO Reddit and you know on various other PvP and Discord channels out there for their input on how these other things are going to impact the PvP meta. Um, we've we've been receiving a lot of things to enhance PvP over the past like six to eight months, which is really interesting. Um, it's actually kind of surprising how much they've been focusing on PvP. Um, types of things inside this game for a while. Um, it's kind of funny um, whenever you see some of the reviews by Timberwolf and he's like, man, I don't see much use out of this console. And in my mind, I'm like, well, because it's meant for PvP. And, and, and for a lot of these recent things in, in the game, a lot of this, a lot of the new consoles, new traits seem to be focused around PvP. Uh, I mean, true, the trait would be probably a budget PvP thing if buying one promotion pack ship is budget, but probably not, honestly. Um, um, this event, if it hasn't already wrapped up for you, it's wrapping up soon. Um, this thing, on uh, the, the, uh, the launch event, I believe, is, is available right now on console. Um, so if you're on console, feel free to grind a little bit to get that um, event. It does take a bit extra time to do it. Um, I mean, and, and for me, because I, I have two accounts, I had to grind it twice anyway um hopefully some of this um, stuff in this video was informative to you um so you can make a wise and sound decision as to whether or not you want the franklin or you want um, one of the other promotion back starships um in the game right now on pc um keep in mind just as another rant here um if your goal is to use um c store um zen in or um and converting it to energy credits um, getting um, the promotion pack um, R and D packs from the C store is is one of the most cost efficient ways to get lots and lots of energy credits in this game. So at least there's that for you for those of you that want to do that to get something else um, from from the exchange right now. Uh, promotion pack stuff will go a little bit cheaper because we have the promotion pack thing going right now on PC, but um, there are the there are the other other ships available to you too. That I think are great ships out there as well. Anyway, thank you all for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.